Royal Reign. Tonight, they'll try to extend their unbeaten streak to four games in their Challenge Cup game versus San Diego. Fallon Tullis Joyce is getting high praise as Earl Reign's number one goalkeeper. Tonight, she will oppose England's Carly Telford, who will be making her NWSL first start. The MWSL Challenge Cup on Paramount Plus. Tonight it's O.L. Reign hosting the San Diego Wave. Two teams are tied at the top of the Western group with seven points, and it could be a three-team tie with seven if San Diego gets a win tonight. With Lori Lindsay, I'm J.P. Della Camera. First game, Lori, after the international break. What are you expecting? Yeah, we're expecting heavy roster rotation, especially with the quick turnaround from that international break. So the big question is, how do these two teams deal with that? And when that's the case, you have to rely on your veteran leadership. Lauren Barnes is that player for O.L. Reign. She makes her way back after missing last game due to yellow card accumulation. She's one of the most composed defenders in the league and has the ability to get into the attack. But the question mark today will be, can she use her vocal leadership and lead the line because they will be facing this player right here, one of the best strikers in the league, Alex Morgan. She is in great form. Two goals against Angel City last week. She can hurt you in a variety of ways, whether it's popping out wide, whether it's playing central, but it's been her movement in the box so far in the Challenge Cup that has been the difference, and she's been finishing her chances when she gets them. Expect her to be a handful tonight. Well, no surprise. Alex Morgan will again be in the starting 11 tonight for the San Diego Wave, but there'll be changes for both teams. We'll give you the starting 11s for O.L. Reign and the San Diego Wave when we continue with the NWSL Challenge Cup here on Paramount+. Plus. Welcome back, everyone, to the MWSL Challenge Cup from Lumen Field in Seattle, Washington. O.L. Reign versus San Diego Wave with Lori Lindsay. I'm J.P. Della Campbell. We talked about changes in the starting 11s. Let's start first with the home side, O.L. Reign. Yeah, for O.L. Reign, seven changes to be exact. Phoebe McLaren and Sinclair Miramontes make their way into the starting lineup in place of Cook and Huerta on that back line. And then a little higher up, Bethany Balter will find herself in a little bit of a deeper position in that tacky midfield role to be able to help Link play, which will ultimately allow for Allie Watt to threaten in behind. And then for San Diego, four changes for them. Carly Telford, the England international, makes her first NWSL start. Very similar to Kaylin Sheridan, that she can play out of the back, good with her feet. The midfield trio, the dab, Horniak, and Turnbow stays the same. And then Katie Johnson rounds out the trio up top with Morgan and Taylor. Johnson, really good 1v1, can get isolated and serve dangerous balls in. First game after the international break, and this is the only game actually tonight in the Challenge Cup. There'll be another one tomorrow that we'll have for you with Houston and Kansas City, a rematch of their game that was won by Kansas City last time we saw them out in a 3 nothing win. O.L. Reign will be in the white uniforms tonight. San Diego Wave in blue. Randy Yacht, one of many young players getting a rare start this evening. It's a debut in the NWSL Challenge Cup. That's Bethany Balser. You can start at forward. We'll, looks like we'll see her, Lori, maybe wide on the left side tonight. Or in the attacking midfield row, a little bit deeper. Definitely a player that can play with her back to the goal, but also get into the box and, and create a th threat with her aerial presence. Nine goals last year. And she was not a regular starter. Started 13 games, but played in 23. Waiting to kick off, Adorai Monroy is our match referee. the new home for O.L. Reign. Last year they played in Tacoma. Previous years they had played in Seattle, but in different venues. This is great 
for these women to be playing in the home of the Seattle Sounders and the Seattle Seahawks. Underway from Lumen Field. Barnes kick to Balser. Disrupted right away. First foul, just seconds old on McNabb. A lot of players back from the international break, and many of those we're not seeing tonight in the starting 11. We'll see some available on the subs bench, but may not get to play. San Diego on the attack on this right side. Turnbow sending it in, and that's going wide. Picked up by O.L. Rain. It away right away. Hansen picked by Oil Rain. They're one of three unbeaten teams in this Challenge Cup, looking to be the first team to get another victory here. First corner and the pace at which. O.L. Rain, J.P. plays at will be an indicator on how successful they can be in this game tonight. Just with the roster rotation, players in some new positions. They can move the ball quickly, can unsettle San Diego because San Diego has a variety of ways that they can attack, whether being direct or circulating the ball, looking to deliver balls in from the wide areas. Barnes back from a one-game suspension due to a accumulation of yellow cards. Floated up to the middle. A couple players missing that ball. It's still loose in a dangerous spot. Still active. Off a couple of faces. And then another shot that goes in. San Diego never recovered. And O.L. Rain have the lead in just the third minute. Looked like Stanton will get credit for the goal. Well, it's an excellent start from O.L. Rain, almost out of nowhere. It's good delivery originally from Lauren Barnes, an in-swinger. They're able to keep it alive, ricocheting off a couple different players. First, Korniak, and then it looks like Katie Johnson in the face, and then ultimately just keeps it on frame, which is the key. Telford doesn't see it till late, just slots it into the far post. Does look like Stanton for her first goal of the Challenge Cup. Excellent start at home for O.L. Rain, 1-0. Fourth game of the Challenge Cup for Oil Rain. Fourth time that they have scored the game's first goal. This one, very early. And as you know, when you past experience as a player, sometimes you can score too early, and that changes things. We'll see. Ball played across and goes on top of the bar. And actually, I think both of these coaches will be happy. I mean, obviously, Casey Stoney not conceding so early in this game. But that's what you're looking for in the Challenge Cup. How do you handle the adversity? Oh, well, rain going up with, again, a lot of new faces in the starting lineup. And then San Diego being an expansion team. How do they handle it? How are they able to get themselves into this game away from home? Lauren Barnes, disruptive, but continues. No one was able to close her down. Barnes keeping it. Left side, King. Sierra King's pass back. Slipped through. King with an angle. Flag is now up. Offside. Will it be this partnership between King and Barnes that will be interesting on this left-hand side for the rain? Just Barnes' ability to be able to play make on that left-hand side, provide the width, which will allow King to be able to get more central in her positioning and ultimately threaten in behind San Diego's outside right back, Westfall. Barnes winning it. That cultured left foot going long, but that's cleared away. Westfall. Trying to go up the right side and then lost it out of play. So you're San Diego, you're a new team. You do have some veterans out there, but how do you overcome that? You give up a goal so early. Well, you stay patient, you stay calm, and then you start to find the players like Korniak, Turnbow, in those central areas that have been successful so far in this tournament in terms of helping link play. But then also you look to bypass, you look to find the players up top, Jody Taylor, Alex Morgan, who've been in excellent form so far in their first three games. And look to see if you can threaten this back line 
A lot of new faces. One of them, Miramontes, on the ball right now. On Let's go. This is Miramontes sending it into the box. That looked good. Intended for Balser. Wave are back in the attack. Coming off their best performance. Nice ball ahead. Morgan has help. Sending it in, and that's cut off. Katie Johnson was open. Instead, it's taken over by O.L. Rain for King. King turning it upfield, formerly with the Utah Royals. Trying to spring Ali Watt with that one. We saw a moment ago, JP, Alex Morgan just taking advantage of that space when Mir Montez does get higher up the field in the attack for the rain. That is something that San Diego will be looking for throughout this game. Just the experience of Alex Morgan, her ability to drop deep and also get in behind. Long run of that left side. Wave catch up to it. Rain put pressure on the ball and win it. Bossers after it. But that's cut off. Push to the right side. Westfall high up. In the right back spot. Working against King. One nothing. Rain lead. Stanton in the third minute. Katie Johnson, only with Chicago, sending it across, and that's headed away. Collision air. Watt went down with McNabb. And the foul goes against San Diego. Free kick here for O.L. Reign. They've got the lead on Nikki Stanton's first ever NWSL goal in any competition. One of the veterans that Laura Harvey brought in said wanted players to come in that knew how to win. That's something, JP, that's not talked about a ton. Just those players that aren't consistent. Walser! And it's 2 0 Oil Rain from long distance and seemingly from out of nowhere. And it's one of the reasons why. Laura Harvey opted to play Bethany Balser a little bit deeper in that attacking midfield role because she is good with her back to goal. She can help link play. And this one, she just unleashes this shot. No one picks her up. It's a poor pass back. Telford tries to go long. And then it's good defense from O.L. Rain. Just picks the pocket of Korniak. Balser gets faced up with her left foot. And it's that dip that bypasses Telford in the end. What a strike from distance. What a start from Ola Rain here at Lumen Field. Well, that second goal prompted a huddle that you probably saw from San Diego. It's one thing to give up a goal in the opening minutes. It's another to give up two, and we're not even 10 minutes in. And that has been the area where San Diego has had some issues. Just the turnovers, trying to play out of the back, loose balls, and then picked off by the opposition. Really good pressure in the midfield, and then Balser getting on the end of it. Taylor. Leaves it left. Ball stayed in play, apparently. Going all the way back to goal. Tullus Joyce will clear that ball. Morgan on that left side, floating one up. Not it down this right side. It's blocked. It's a Taylor attempt. But now, Morgan. Alex with the shot and a goal goal. It was one of the questions, JP, that we had coming into this game. What was Rain in particular going to look like with seven changes and not having somebody like Fishlock? Here's the opportunity from Alex Morgan, just peeling out wide. Look, gets a good strike on it, but until it's Joyce, breeze it all the way. But with so many changes for the Rain and not the likes of Fishlock or Quinn in the midfield who've been so important to them in terms of moving the ball, keeping possession, creating a high tempo. It's an excellent start. A big hole for San Diego to dig out of on the road. They can't concede anymore here. On that right side. 
tucked away. Watt will try to recover. And in that collision, it's going to be moved a corner. As that ball went out of play. In the last corner kick, we remember what happened. Watt already, Ellie Watt looks dangerous in that center forward role, able to peel out wide and just create questions for that back line for San Diego and who's going to pick her up. And that's going on that right hand side, doing a good job defensively. There's Lauren Barnes again, 10th year veteran out of UCLA. Sent it in low, flicked toward goal, but it's cut off. King kept it alive with a toe poke. Real blocked. Chipped over, and there's the third goal! It is turning into a route in the early going. And just out of nowhere, three goals in the opening 12 minutes for the rain. I couldn't write a better it. start. Another great delivery, and it's just poor clearance. San Diego doesn't get out. They're trying to separate themselves, and it's an OL rain defensively, just doing what they can to get something on it. And just lost it to the far post. No answers to San Diego. Telford ultimately off our line in no man's land. Can't make the play. Now it's a 3 0 thing. Rain lead here in the 12th minute. Coming into this game, they had scored five goals total, all from the run of play. They've got three here, and we're still early in this game. Well, since I said San Diego can't afford to give up any more goals, they've given up two more. Balser helping to win it back. So you've got Stanton, Balser, and Hyatt all on the score sheet. Here in the 13th minute. Deflected away. Way with it, Westfall. One of two expansion teams, bringing the NWSL total to 12. Angel City is the other. We will see them on Sunday against this oil rain side. Turnbull, and that's wide of a diving Tullus Joyce. And it's not a bad attempt from Turnbow just to get herself running at the back line. That's where she's most dangerous in those central areas, running at the back line of the rain. Just tries to bend it into the far post, doesn't get enough curve on it. You wonder what Casey Stoney is thinking with the career that she had, the way she played the game. And now she's watching, worst case scenario, her team trailing by three goals on the road against a very good team. First game back out of the international break. Well, the thing is with this San Diego team as well, these are all things that can be corrected. Two balls that weren't cleared off of corner kicks. And then obviously an excellent strike from Balser. But again, just trying to play out of the back in precarious areas that, learned, that lead to that turnover. Now it'll be about staying patient, staying composed. They do have threats up top with Jody Taylor, Katie Johnson, and Alex Morgan. Obviously, they can go direct, but they can also play out wide and look to see if they can deliver balls in. Right now, it's just going to be about getting a hold of the ball, looking to see if they can utilize their midfield, start keeping a bit more possession against this rain side. The yacht was dispossessed. Katie Johnson had Morgan open, couldn't find her. Instead, went for Taylor in the middle. It's tough for San Diego right now. You're nowhere near halftime where you could make adjustments, right? It's very early to be making subs, but you know what do you do in this situation when you're down by three goals? How do you how do you slow this down? Well, at times you go direct and see if you can put this back line of O.L. Reign under some pressure. You have McLaren that we talked about, Sinclair Miramontes, both of those players coming into this game had only played one minute each. So look to see if you can exploit them behind, get them running at their own at their own goal. But then also, just keep possession at times. Right now, with too many turnovers, making it easy for O.L. Reign to be able to find space in behind. Katie Johnson, San Diego looking for one answer at least, get them back 
get some, get them some confidence, get them closer from this three nothing deficit. King, ball serve. This example right there with Westfall. Just keep possession, link play. The space is clearly out wide. At times, both teams looking really narrow. Can San Diego circulate it from right to left? Be a bit more patient and then look for the options of Turbo Central or even Korniak making the runs through. A dream start though for O.L. Reign. Scoring three goals, finishing on their chances early. Getting some momentum, getting some confidence. Lions going to throw it right in front of her coach, Laura Harvey. Two-time coach of the year, including last season when she came in in the middle of the year for Fareed Benstini, turned things around got in a second place. And all the way into the semifinals where they lost to the eventual champions, Washington Spirit, the game we broadcast out of Tacoma. They were the favorites in that particular game. Home field advantage. Laura Harvey's team did not have their best performance, but full credit to the Washington Spirit on that day and on their next game against Chicago. And they were the deserved champions of this league. Well, it was interesting talking to Laura Harvey, too, and just asking her what does she feel like they needed to improve upon coming into this season after a successful latter part of last year. And she said, we just needed to deepen our roster. We mentioned it earlier of Stanton and Latsko being brought in, especially with McNabb and Weatherholt departing in the expansion draft. So they needed to have more players that have that experience in the NWSL, understand how to win, and just understand the grind of how long this season is. Already we're seeing that from Stanton getting the goal, getting her first start of the Challenge Cup, and then Latsko. Not a player that's honed in a lot, but all the dirty work on the wing, whether it's right side, whether it's the left side, tracks back defensively, helps players out, ultimately allows players like Wad or Zier King, who's in the starting lineup as well, be able to show their quality in the attacking third. That's Barnes in the throw in for King. Last touch by San Diego. Soft Dahl Kemper started one game for the U.S. against Uzbekistan and came in as a sub in the other. Her center back partner, Gurma, we congratulate her, her first ever cap. Played the other night for the U.S. against Uzbekistan. Available on the subs bench. She has been a starter every game for San Diego. Number one draft pick overall. Ball won by San Diego. Katie Johnson right. She's played internationally for Mexico. Balser brought it down. King. Over the top. Trying to spring one, but the flag was up. Good idea from King to look to see if she can play Watt in behind. Watt just can't keep herself on side. But it's the defensive pressure from Rain that has been so good so far this season. The amount of numbers that they can commit defensively behind the ball, denying penetrating passes from San Diego, really limits the opportunities going forward. Three only goals, the difference here. Oil Rain on top with a commanding 3 0 lead. For expansion side, San Diego. Is the most goals they've scored so far this year in the Challenge Cup. They had three in an away win against Angel City, but that was in the entire game. Westfall. That tackle from King. King committed the foul, but it appeared to have gotten the worst of it. Right now, both players are in trouble. does look like King gets her ankle caught under Westfall's leg as they're both going into that tackle. King a little bit late to the challenge and then ultimately gets stepped on in the end.
ultimately actually does look like a decent challenge. Just gets away from Westfall as King's coming in, and then you see Westfall's follow through onto King's ankle. Would be a big loss for the rain. She ultimately can't continue in this game. Just how she started, started the first game against Portland, helped get the assist on Huerta's goal. Just been a different type of player for the rain, whether it's coming off the bench or getting the start. It'll be a big loss, though, for her, considering it's just her second start. And it's, it's a deep roster, so she's getting a chance to start. Last thing she wants to do is have to come out of a game. But she may not have much of a choice. In her third season in the league, getting the bench with some assistance. Here in the 21st minute, at the moment, all OL rain with a 3 0 lead at home. And plenty of available subs tonight, although Laura Harvey wasn't planning on using any this early. Del Camper will hold things up. First player that they signed when they announced they were coming into the league. McNabb to the left. Morgan, double team. Take it away. Wave win it back. Sent along by Dal Kemper into the box. It's going to be cleared. Watt will send it the other way. Well, Rain had not made a change yet, so going with 10. Westfall, halfway line, John Kemper, looks for Taylor, headed out, throw in, San Diego. They get it in quickly for Del Kemper. Switched across by Real. McNabb going back. Del Kemper. Inside the circle now out, moving it. Taylor with a flick. She got it back, but not in a good spot. Off a block there, off Korniak, and now McNabb. Hanson. Morgan turning. Well, it's going to be knocked down for a throw in for San Diego. The back line for the rain looks really good. Hyatt leading the line, stepping up when she's needed just to disrupt the play. All four of them, tight unit. Here, Montez doing a good job of just staying with Alex Morgan, denying her really any clear cut opportunities, especially when she drif drifts wide. Short pass to Hyatt. Scored their third and last goal. Korniak over the top. Brought down Morgan shot and San Diego's on the board. Alex Morgan called for where she wanted that ball and delivered. Clutch goal. San Diego needed something positive. And Alex Morgan makes it look so easy. Just times to run perfectly. There's no pressure on the ball. So the back line, after I just talked about rain, back line looking so good and tight as a unit. They don't drop. It's a great ball from Korniak over the top, right into the path. Could have been a close handball, but she brings it down right into the path of her, her run and then makes no mistake about it. Tillis Joy is trying to come off her line, but in the end. So third goal, this challenge cup. Coming in the 24th minute. To give her side some life. If they can get another one, we'll turn things around. But right now, they need to get a little bit of control of the game, right? Better control. Well, certainly, and this would be the question mark in terms of 
the oil rain now can they slow things down can they start to move the ball themselves one thing they pride themselves is the possession the tempo that they play at but a lot of that again runs through the likes of Quinn Fishlock when they're in the game now can Stanton be that player yes she's more of a bit of a disruptor getting into the mix looking to see if she could break up play she's going to need to be one of those link players in the midfield for the rain just to slow things down and take this game to San Diego. The far side, it's going to be blasted out. Throw it here for OL Rain. OL Rain has been playing down a player for several minutes now with King. Short ball. It's blocked. San Diego was looking for it, but the center up by Hyatt. Now outside the box off Watt. Cleared away. And the ball was needed there. And Katie Johnson free. Jody Taylor picking up with the press. How does San Diego play now these next 10 minutes after scoring that goal? Exactly what we're seeing. Look to see if they can go direct. See if they can expose the Reigns back line in behind. But then also, again, continue to circulate the ball, continue to move it quickly. Reigns dropping a lot deeper than we've seen them. First time they've been under any real pressure. Taylor went for it. So Taylor continues the fight. Two players down, no call either way. Now they want to look for it. Instead, it's knocked down. I'm wondering why it took so long for the sub. We don't know whether or not there was any conversation about King going back in, but Puerto is going to be coming in. But when you're up three to nothing and you've had nobody warming up, so and you don't want anybody else to get hurt, you can understand why it took so long. But a three nothing lead, I'm sure, factored into that delay as well. And one of the reasons why we did see the rain drop deeper in their defensive posture, just get numbers behind the ball. is very versatile, so let's see where she ends up playing. Let's hope that King is okay. Watt will send it into space. Hunt it down to that right side. Several in the box now for O.L. Rain, and then a late run as well from Watt. And it does look like Huerta will be playing that attacking midfield role. It'll push Balser a little bit higher up the, into that attacking, or excuse me, into the center forward position. And she'll be flanked by Latsko and Watt. And I like Huerta playing in more of that central role. This would be able to provide the patience that we've been talking about, the tempo, just linking play underneath Balser. Has become a very dependable right back. Six assists last year, led the league. Has also been a steady call up now to the U.S. national team. She believes Cup before, and then these two games against Uzbekistan. Alex Morgan with San Diego's only goal that did give them some life. Can they climb closer? Miramontes. That's cut off. But given away by McNabb. Throw in for O.L. Rain. Got a 3-1 lead at home. Miramontes on Balser. Glatzko, end line, cuts into the box. Glatzko trying to play it back. She had a couple players there. Huerta was going for it. Instead, it's San Diego clearing. Taylor couldn't hang on to it. It's a ball for her. This turn. Ball serve. Laid it off. Great though. Ball serve. Only one. Thought that Latsko was going to make that run. Goal kick. And already seeing what Huerta will bring in the midfield. Just linking play. Good interchange from the rain. 
Just the execution with the final ball too heavy for Latsko. Westfall. Headed for Johnson. Foul goes against Hello Ray. Set it long. I think it was moved back just a couple yards. <laughs> Ultimately, ended up in the same place. Yeah. Hanson. Dal Kemper. Cornyan. Real. Off by Oil Rain. Ball serve. Trying to find Watt. Numbers back for San Diego. They clear it up. And right now, JP, for San Diego, that left hand side is causing themselves their own issues for San Diego. It's Hansen and Morgan. Morgan's looking to see if she can get in behind, but pinching in narrow. And Hansen's not getting wide enough to pull out the defense for the rain. One of them has to provide the width to stretch rain and then be able to play in behind or open up those gaps that we've talked about for Turnbow. Right now it's just too easy, too narrow. Dahl Kemper back. He'll play it back. Too softly to Telford. It's a dangerous ball back. Good hard work there defending by Watt. Katie Johnson. The pressure pays off for O.L. Rain. Stanton. Goal started it tonight for OL Ray. Miramontes. The cross back post area is wide. Apparently that ball stayed in play the entire ball. Did not go out. Watt sending it in. Headed up. Oh, off Let's go and then off the crossbar. That would have been a very bad goal to concede there. And it's a tough ball to defend. Just bounces in the end. The ball from Watt. Looks to get a little separation from Westfall. And then the bounce right there is so difficult for Hanson to deal with. And it's ultimately behind Latsko. Can't get enough pace on it. Just tries to lob it in. Does look like Telford would have had it covered, but off the crossbar anyway. Latsko battling. Bosser was given to her. Bosser holds it up. Go back, Stanton, stepping into it, let's go. Towards the halfway line. Ball sir, flag went up. Thirty-fourth minute, we've got North Carolina versus Washington, April 23rd, one Eastern on CBS. Those two teams are both undefeated along with team you're watching tonight, O.L. Reign. Only three undefeated teams left in the Challenge Cup. Washington trying to defend their crown once the regular season starts. Challenge Cup defending champs are important thorns. Morgan went for it, couldn't quite get it. They battled harder. They've been hungrier since they scored that first goal in San Diego. They have, and they're moving the ball a bit quicker, but it's the Reigns defense, the amount of players that get behind the ball after the, the ball is turned over defensively makes it so difficult for San Diego. Haven't been able to find outside of Alex's goal any space in behind. They're doing a good job of dropping when there isn't pressure on the ball and ultimately stepping up when needed. We've seen Turnbow in some of the previous games have a lot of success looking to see if she can pick up balls on the outside of the holding mid for the opposition and just haven't called her name enough, hasn't been able to get into the game. A lot of credit for 
Stanton and her positioning. But also Vander Yacht dropping deep when necessary helped them get into the attack and create numbers overload as well. These are players with minimal minutes for the rain so far this season or even in NWSL. It really speaks to the understanding of the philosophy and really what Laura Harvey spoke to us about, which is training in the way during this international break, knowing that they wouldn't have a lot of those international players coming back with the quick turnaround. We really wanted to get these players ready and it really come to fruition with the three early goals in the first 12 minutes. She spoke about her depth the other day and about that young depth that she's not afraid to play young players. Brought down Taylor. Johnson. And that's wide. It's deflected though. So it's going to be a corner kick for San Diego. And I like the variety and that Katie Johnson brings this front line for San Diego has a free roll to be able to cut inside. But much like on the other side with Alex Morgan, there's no one providing that width. Typically we see Sophia Jakobsen, who will hug that touch line, just create isolation for herself in 1v1 situations. We just haven't seen it for San Diego in this first half. Set it by Turnbow, headed up the middle. It's off the clearance from Puerta. Puerta going after it. Got a piece of the ball, touched it last, out for a San Diego throw in, 37th minute. Oh, off Morgan, and she got taken out. Slowly getting back up. Del Kemper. Looks for Alex Morgan on that left side. Morgan with San Diego's only goal. Latsko helps to win it back defensively. She'll clear it. Mayor Montez has been so good this first half. Not the player that you typically see get into the attack. More of getting stuck into tackles. She's done just that against Alex Morgan, but then also when the timing is right, she's gotten herself in and been able to provide some delivery from that right-hand side. back. Thomas Joyce trying to clear it. Good job to keep it in play. Not concede the throw in. Hyatt. That time it's given away. And given away right back. Balls are turning. Facing goal. Putting it into space to the feet of Ali Watt. Runners coming in support for O.L. Reign. Watt in the box. 1v1 at the moment. Dropping it back. Balser lines it up. Wide. My apologies. Let's go. Not ball sir. And Ali Watt just providing a different look up top, getting able to get in behind, but then take on 1v1. It's the right decision just to lay it to Latsko, who has plenty of time right on top of the box to take a touch, and that doesn't miss by far. Just wide of the post. Another good look from the rain. And it's just like that. One or two passes that springs Ali Watt in, and they're off in quick offensive transition. Really been difficult for San Diego defensively to deal with. Describe this game, Roy, to someone that's just tuning in now. Four goals have been scored in the 39th minute. Uh, oh, magnificent start from the OL Reign at home. Up three goals in the first 12 minutes. Just made the most of their opportunities. Two off of set pieces, especially with so much roster rotation. Just came into this game confident with the personnel that they have out there and made it really difficult on both sides of the ball for San Diego to really get themselves into this game. It's taken out by Johnson. And as much as we've talked about the San Diego team and the pieces that they have for an expansion team, they've looked really good so far in this, this Challenge Cup. The, tr the reality is that they are an expansion team, and you have an OL Reign team that has a philosophy. They have a real good understanding under their coach, Laura Harvey. And that will take time for San Diego. 
and as disappointed they would be in letting in three goals, they have found themselves getting one back without much of the play in this first half. And there's high hopes for San Diego. Both California franchises that are coming in, right? Great TV market, great fans in both of those areas. Stadium plans, etc. Good ownership, both. Jill Ellis, president of the San Diego Wave, won the last two Women's World Cups as the head coach of the U.S. national team. It was a big hire when they first made that announcement. Followed up by Casey Stoney and her reputation as their first head coach. It's going to go out of play. Intended for what? Westfall short with that throw in. And I thought Watt touched it last, but apparently not. It's ruled no a rain throw in. Lauren Barnes. Looking for someone open. And that left side. Battle is still continuing. No foul was called either way. Knocked out. Throw in San Diego. Watt is still down. <laughs> Lots to talk about at halftime for these two coaches. Their bench might be deeper today than normal because you've got players like Jess Fishlock on a low range bench. She's always a starter. There's others on both sides that are in that same category. I'm sure Laura Harvey would be just as happy not to utilize those players. But always a luxury for yeah. the rain to have Indivisel player of the year from last year sitting on your bench. Yeah. Use those players on Sunday. If they can get away without using them tonight. Ball that was just played from Orniak, just trying to loft it in behind. That's an example, though. Low percentage ball, no intent to try to hit any player, and they can use the width. It just makes it so predictable right now for the rain. They don't have to shift defensively. They don't have to move. Ultimately, it's just a giveaway, and then they're able to regain possession. And that will be the next evolution of the San Diego team because they do have the personnel, and that is why the expectations are so high in this initial year. But they have to be able to utilize, understand where the space is. I was expecting a call there. Ball belongs to O.L. Rain, closing minutes of this first half. Terrific start for the rain. They were up by three goals very early. Alex Morgan brought her team back with their only talent. Morgan's goal coming in the 24th minute. Telford starting for Caitlin Sheridan, another player back from international duty, playing for Canada. Turnbow. Looking for room on that right side. Very promising player. Number six in blue, sending it up. And that's over Katie Johnson. Oh, Rain, back home this coming Sunday, April the 17th. We'll take on Angel City. Go to oilrain.com slash tickets. Purchase your tickets today. No Megan Rapino today, still working her way back from calf injury. Don't want to risk anything now. It's a long season. This is the Challenge Cup, which is really six games for everyone and competing for a trophy, but it's the regular season that's the bigger prize for all of these teams. Westfall. Taken 
back. Huerta came in as a sub for the injured King. Waiting for a signal on stoppage time, which we should get momentarily. Three minutes are stoppage time presented by Verizon. Much of that was most likely for the King injury. If we do get an update on King, we will pass that along. Westfall headed forward. It's Morgan that time. Coming up on the right side. Johnson drifts into the middle. Taylor, that's blocked and cleared out. Maybe McFernan, just her second game of the season. It'll be a throw in here for Westfall. First minute of stoppage time. Minimum of three on the board. Throw in into the box. Huerta got a touch, and now we'll clear it. Hansen. That was well received, and now tackled away. Stanton did a good job defensively. Yeah, great positioning by Stanton because it was overcommitment from where to, to try to win that ball. Stanton in the right positioning to regain possession. Dal Kemper. Just about halfway through at stoppage time. Collision there, let's go. And Stanton were right there. Let's go to work extremely hard on both sides of the ball tonight. Yeah, such a good pickup for Laura Harvey in the rain coming over from Houston. And again, one of those players that you don't notice all that often. She's not flashy out in the field. But she does all the dirty work and allows for players around her to get involved and showcase their attributes. And those are the players you want. Those are the players that help win championships. Well, Harvey's certainly singing her praises when we spoke to her yesterday. Like all coaches, right, she won't be happy that they gave a goal back. But what a start for her team at home. Excellent start. It just shows the preparation that they had coming into this game. Weekend and a half to prepare. Again, going back to what we said in terms of not relying that they're going to have a lot of those international players to be available with such a quick turnaround and a lot of them coming on international flights had to prepare as if they weren't going to be out in the field and goodness did they get off to a great start excellent deliveries off of two set pieces the corner kicks from Lauren Barnes that's going to do it for the first half Lori your thoughts on the way this first 45 is played out <laughs> well you couldn't write a better a script for the rain at home undefeated coming into this game at Lumen Field and they're continuing that so far going into this halftime but some key players stepping up we talked about the service off of the corner kicks from Lauren Barnes and then Bethany Balser with just an excellent finish from distance and that's what you want when you have roster rotation players stepping up but for San Diego pulling one back gonna need to regroup figure out how they can find some width in this field and look to see if they can pull out rain defensively to open up some opportunities in the box. 45 minutes went by rather quickly, maybe not that quickly for San Diego because they trailed by three goals very early in this one. It's 3-1 at the half. This is the Challenge Cup on Paramount+. Plus. Welcome back, everyone. We're here at halftime of the game between the San Diego Wave and OL Reign on Paramount Plus. Well, one of the stars of the San Diego Wave is Alex Morgan. She was recently interviewed by Lisa Roman and Sandra Herrera on the Attacking Third podcast. Here is a portion of that interview. 
what identity would you give to San Diego Wave FC? I think that we're pretty organized defensively, which I think everyone expected given KCD and the coach. Um, but I think uh, we've shown to be really dynamic in the attack. We're having midfielders break lines, um, forwards interchanging with each other. Um, I think we also are a team that has shown that our players coming off the bench have done incredibly well to kind of change the game and, and the tempo of the game. We're having players scoring off the bench, Amir Ali coming in um, this last game and games before that always making a difference. So I think those are kind of the things that have stuck out in the last few games. Getting back to your California roots, what has it meant to you to be able to, to get back into your home state and uh, put on an NWSL jersey to represent Kelly? Yeah, it's just incredible. Like, I can't stress it enough just how happy I am in life. Um, and I think that's been the most important part about this whole thing is um, if I'm happy, like, in the out, like, in my life outside of soccer, that's going to translate in soccer. And I'm going to be able to give 100% of me to my team. And so I think, like, everything has just really come together um, right now in my career in that, you know, I have my daughter that, you know, I'm, I'm so proud of. And my best part of, you know, game days are being able to kick the ball around with her after the game. Um, but I go to training and we have a team that, um, you know, has really created an, a great culture in the locker room, um, you know, starting from the ground up with San Diego, uh, having a sold out crowd in our first game, um, being able to be a part of something from the very beginning has um, really been great. And I'm very happy here. And I think that this was like the perfect move at this time in my career. Download and subscribe to Attacking Third wherever you listen to your podcast or watch this video at youtube.com slash attacking third. That was Alex Morgan with Lisa Rowan and Sandra Herrera on the Attacking Third podcast. We're coming right back with more NWSL action here on Paramount+. Plus. Welcome back, everyone, to the NWSL Challenge Cup here on Paramount Plus. A 3 1 lead for the home side of a rain over the San Diego Wave. Here are the highlights from the first 45 minutes of play. And OL Rain would get off to a, a great start in this game. It'd be delivery from Lauren Barnes to be able to keep this ball alive right in the mix. San Diego wouldn't be able to clear this ball, and it would land right to Stanton, who keeps it low. Does it? get a little deflection in the end but strikes it well by keeping it low and finds the near post right past Carly Telford and then it's just a poor clearance San Diego putting themselves under pressure and then Bethany Balser picks this up right on top of the box just gets herself faced up and then what a strike this is a little dip as soon as Telford is trying to make the play, just dips right before a pass into the goal. And then it'll be Lauren Barnes, another terrific ball. San Diego unable to, to clear it. Zira King trying to keep it alive. And then Hyatt with a half chance just floats it into the far post. And just defensive mistakes for San Diego. Can't clear the box, can't get players out. And then it'll be just down to 10 players for Zira King goes off for an injury. It'd be a beautiful ball in from Korniak, though. Great time to run from Alex Morgan. Just slot, slots it far post as Tillis Joyce is trying to make a play off the line. First half numbers, did they tell us much about the game? There were five shots for San Diego compared to eight the other way. I wouldn't say so. It wasn't sustained possession by either team, but for sure, O.L. Reign making their, taking their chances putting San Diego under a ton of pressure early on in this game and then never really threatening for San Diego or any clear-cut chances outside of Alex Morgan's goal. Three goals in the first 11 minutes. Terrific start for O.O. Reign. Can their strong first half play continue on in the second? Come back with us for the second half on Paramount+. Plus. Another NWSL game coming your way on CBS the 23rd of April. North Carolina 
and the Washington Spirit. We saw so many of the Washington Spirit players on display when the USA took on Uzbekistan in these last two games. Hatch, Sanchez, Sullivan, O'Hara. Who am I missing? The list <laughs> kept going, right? They had more players than any other team uh, in those two games. A lot of players back from international duty. One of the reasons why Stanford is probably getting a start today, and she's making a count. Yes, she certainly has. Her positioning so far in this game has been excellent. Just screening the back line, providing cover. Something that she's done her entire career, making her way to the rain from Chicago Red Stars. One of those players that we mentioned for Laura Harvey was an integral pickup just to provide some more depth to this team and really stepped up her play and been a leader in this game so far. Well, Greedy is coming in. We'll have to see who has come out. If that is the only change that's being made. Cold night in Seattle. Rough start for the San Diego Wave, who gave up three goals in the first 11 minutes. That is a Challenge Cup record for the three fastest goals scored. Del Kemper's the player that went out. She got significant minutes. 30 the other day, which is not that much, but a full 90 in the first game that she got. Got to take care of these players. A lot of games coming up in a short period of time, and then the regular season will start. Start of May. Well, with Abby Dahlkemper coming out, that's going to push Kristen McNabb into that center back role next to Katie Real, and then Bell Breedy will be in the midfield with Turnbow and Corniak. It'll be interesting to see how this rotation in the midfield of San Diego actually turns out not having McNabb, that real defensive presence in there. Obviously, they're chasing the game, want to get more players forward into the attack. Definitely won't have the defensive cover that you typically see when McNabb's in that center midfield role. He's from Stanford. They have produced so many terrific players for the NWSL and for our national team for that matter. Hanson's pass. Next goal big, if San Diego gets it, they're within one. If Oral Rain gets it, maybe they just continue on the way they did in the opening half. Back by McNabb. Telford. Ball skipping past Breedy. She'll catch up to it. That was a nice first touch, but the second one got away. the San Diego have to do better here in the second half to get that goal not concede one first be more competitive it was just too easy for the rain not only on their goals but just all around the field couldn't get enough pressure on the ball couldn't force well rain to have to play backwards just really had their way with the first 45 minutes so now can San Diego first and foremost compete win tackles and then be direct when it's when it's on it's on right there Morgan right at goal that was unfortunate. Nine times out of ten, you'd be betting on Alex Morgan there. Oh, certainly. And it's just a glimpse of, of how quickly San Diego can get on that front foot. It's able to play a, a ball in, not dealt with. It's Korniak, actually, that gets the flick in the end. And then it's Alex Morgan just falling away. Can't make a good play on it. Nothing that's going to get past Tillis Joyce. showing some of the versatility, especially with Korniak looking to flick balls on. Something that we saw her do quite a bit last year with Orlando Pride. Pride have started rough in the Challenge Cup and to have the injury to Marta. So many injuries, by the way. Uh, unfortunate, right? Tierna Davidson, Lynn Williams, some big names. Sarah Gordon. Significant injuries have forced teams to have to adapt, rotate players, whether it's positionally. We wish them all a very speedy recovery. In the case of some of those players, in fact, for them for both club and country, right? Tierna Davidson looked like she was becoming a starter as a center back on the U.S. national team. Lynn Williams had also been getting a lot of minutes under Vladko Andonovsky. Right. Let's go. 
1v1 at the moment. Former dash attacker, lost it there. San Diego will keep it alive. That's off that yacht. Taylor into a crowded middle. And all the way back. Telford. Short ball ahead of the right. Westfall. And a player down. Corniak. So San Diego just cleared it out. See what happened there, but it's hard to tell. I thought it all originally her foot was stepped on. I think her teammates thought it was a little more serious, and initially it looked like they were calling for a stretcher to come out. 51st minute. O.L. Reign with a 3-1 lead over San Diego. In this Challenge Cup, everyone playing six games. It's broken up into three different groups. This is the West group. Angel City is the other team in that group. We'll see them on Sunday in the stadium against O.L. Reign. Kristen Press leading that team. Battle for the ball, where if they want it. Off Latsko. Walked, lost it. Morgan. Headed for Corniak. Well, Rain getting to it with one. Miramontes. Blocked by Morgan. And then cleared out by San Diego. It's really good pressure from the rain higher up the field. We hadn't seen a ton of that in this game, especially when San Diego is able to break the initial pressure and then get down higher, higher up the field. Good pressure, able to win the ball back. Now there's opportunities for them to be able to swing, switch the play, look to go out the other side, much like we were speaking about with San Diego. Montez getting it in. Pushed out towards Huerta, cut off. Jordy Taylor, giving up to a teammate for the throw in. Taylor, an English international, pushed it back to Hansen, trying to go over the top. The flag is up. Running in the spring, Katie Johnson. Another good display of that back line. And those two center backs in McLaren and, and Hyatt. Always knowing where Taylor is. Kenny Johnson in that attempt. Just trying to curl a run. Well done from the two center backs just to hold their line though. Curl her offside. McNabb commits that foul. Free kick for well Wayne. time with this one. Only game tonight as the NWSL returns after the international break here on Paramount Plus. This result stands the rain. The unbeaten in four. It'll be on ten points. Portland would have seven. San Diego stays at four. Angel City with one in the West. Floated up there. Corniak won the first ball. Second ball is cleared away. Race for this ball. Also looks on the turn. Puerta. It's good 1v1 defending. Not to let her in by Hansen. Sofia Puerta. And now let's clear the safety. Throw in deep here for Earl Rain. It is good 1v1 defending from Hansen, but ultimately just so difficult right now. San Diego creating a lot of their own problems. Can't clear the ball, putting themselves under pressure. Allowing for the rain to be able to win the ball back higher up the field. Katie Johnson 
make an exit. Let's see who's going to be coming in is Amira Ali. There's one goal on the season, seven shots, three of them on target out of Rutgers University. Second sub made. By the way, Miravantes on a bounce. Swing and a miss. Hansen will clear it. Taylor. To the fresh legs of Ali. Nice moves there. Ali on the attack. Has two teammates with her. Heavy touch there. Tries to recover. Cleared by Barnes. Throw in. And Ali quickly getting herself into the game. Much like we saw her against. Angel City last week scoring the final go goal in that 4-2 win for San Diego. Really good at taking players on, good with her feet. All the way up the middle. Korniak will push it left. Hats it. Breedy. Hats a nice cut there. Took Latsko out of the play into the middle. Two players missing. Good opportunity there. Morgan and Ali might have been too close to one another. In the space, good run back. Touch back to Telford, who clears. The sixth minute. No goals this half. It was 3 1 at halftime. Thomas Joyce. The clear number one this year. Last year was the French goalkeeper, Bouadi. She left, so did Miro Sean. Foul right in front of the San Diego bench. Samir also left, so they had three players. They were there on loan, so Laura Harvey knew those players were not coming back, had to replace them. Big pieces to fill, but she did retain a majority of the starting 11. And that foul right there on Alex Morgan. Just a clear difference in how this game has gone. Rain not giving Alex Morgan any room to breathe. Have two players on her, backs to goal, forcing her away. So far, really good defensive performance commitment from the Rain players. Long ball towards the arc. It's cleared away. Pass into the middle. Real. Upfield. Bouncing ball, but Taylor couldn't find it. San Diego will try the long ball. Ali. Step behind the defender, Barnes. Ali catching up to it. Try to get around the veteran. Does. That's a terrific move. But gave the ball away. That's it. Short pass, Breedy. Looking for the dangerous, always dangerous, Alex Morgan. And a few of those balls over the top, just direct balls for San Diego, have proven to cause some issues for the rain defense, especially when they're uncontested. Slide it over the back line. Important moments in this game for the rain to try to get a hold of it, get Huerta on the ball. Talk about Vander Yacht and her ability. Just been a, a quiet player in there, but does link play. San Diego into the box, and no chance there. A little better service. It could be on the board again. Westfall getting close to the hour mark. Ali, taken away from her. She's clearly made a difference since coming on. Different player than Katie Johnson, the player that she replaced. The fresh legs helped too. Westfall. Force back. Further back to Telford. Real. Penn State. 
the Hanson pass. Not much room on that side. Blocked. Miramontes made one play. Van der Yacht chasing. Taylor slipping it through towards Ali. Good angle. Shot off the crossbar. Unless Tullis Joyce got a piece, I didn't think she did. Well, it's a great ball from Jody Taylor. Just a, a no-look pass. It gets on the wrong side of Lauren Barnes and then Ali in an even better position to take that in stride. Takes it well, just ricochets it off the post. Unfortunate for the young player. Already being a nuisance on that right-hand side. Well, Tullis Joyce, Laura Harvey said, an excellent pro. First person in the door, last person leaving. Giving up one tonight. It's a good shot from Alex Morgan. Otherwise, she's got a shutout here. Left side, Hanson. Slowed down. 1v1 defending by Latsko, who draws the foul. Latsko just doing a lot of the dirty work, tracking back, denying Hanson any sort of opportunity to deliver a ball in. And it's just those little moments that we've seen from the rain throughout this game that has been the difference. San Diego is going to be making a change. Here in Germa. Turnbow. Oh, right a goal. Had Morgan breaking. Turnbow starting to get herself in the game, and San Diego starting to put on the pressure a bit more, commit players forward. Haven't seen Turnbow make up many of those little darting runs from the inside to the out. A little better ball needed in the end, but better options, better ideas right now from San Diego in these opening 15 minutes of the second half. That run by Watt. Out for a throw in. We're going to see changes again. Something's happening now. Looking toward the bench. Quinn is going to be coming in for Oil Rain. That'll be one change. And Ali Watt will come out. How did Watt do today? I like Watt a lot. She gives him a different look up top for the for the rain, could threaten in behind, but can also pull out wide, create herself opportunities to get 1v1 in isolation and then serve, deliver really good balls in. Always an outlet when the rain need her in quick offensive transition. Quinn back from a couple of games with Canada. And with Quinn coming in, we'll see how this changes the formation a bit for the rain. It does look like Stanton and Quinn will sit next to each other defensively. Most likely push Balser up into that center forward position. Right for sending it in. Let's go in line. Looking for an option. Too long to deliver, and now the breakout. Bad pass leads to a transition attack here. Taylor is looking for Morgan. Maybe Alex wanted to hold that for another second. Time to run better. We saw the partnership come to fruition in their last game against Angel City before the international break. Morgan and Taylor just hasn't been there tonight. Not a ton of interchange between the two, and you do have to give credit to the rain have stifled a lot of their attempts going forward. Grumma and Jakobsen getting ready to come in. Be a double switch for San Diego. Taylor's going to be coming out. Let's go. Into the box. Too close to go. 
Vince Helford will be able to make a play. Westfall, 65th minute. Scoreless second half. Rain all three goals in the first half. Not only in the first half, in the first 11 minutes. Starting with a goal in the second, added another in the eighth, another in the 11th. Morgan's goal in the 24th. And now we're going to see the changes. So Jakobsen will help the attack. Gerber will help the defense. Hansen will be coming out. That'll be one of the changes. So Gerber will slide into that center back spot where she has started and played every minute of this season before tonight. And Jody Taylor is the other one that's coming out. And not surprising that we're seeing the rotation of these players coming back from international break, not playing the full 90, but also have a quick turnaround for this weekend as well. Need to manage the minutes of all these players and just the travel that they've had to undertake in recent weeks. Some players in this league went as far away as New Zealand, Australia, Kazakhstan. I mean, those are not short flights. And before that, let's not forget, some teams played, what, three games in eight nights before they had to leave for their international team. So the schedule was crowded. Ms. Jakobsen, we've seen her internationally for Sweden. Three Women's World Cups and three Olympics on her great resume. Goal kick for Telford. It is an important time for these teams to be able to try out some of these players because come the summertime with World Cup qualifying, you're going to have to rotate all of these teams, players, manage minutes, have some versatility in where you play players and, and the formations. And we're seeing that with the rain right now and Laura Harvey's team actually throughout this entire Challenge Cup. Personnel changes. We've seen Angelina, who's not out with an injury for this game. We played her, played her in that center forward role and dropped deep. Now we've seen Bethany Balser and Allie Watt in this game. So some flexibility with players and with how long this season is and the grind and just the parity amongst the teams. That is needed. Real up the middle, given away. It's off Stanton. Recovered by San Diego. Derma. Now pulling it back. Too far, intended for Morgan. But now you've got Morgan with some fresh players and Ali and Jakobsen to try to help her out. If they can score one more, they'll make it interesting. But now it's about connecting passes. We saw that ball in from Gurma into Alex. She's overstretching. And that really feels like how this game has gone for San Diego. Haven't really been able to put their foot on this game and, and take control, whether it's in possession, whether it's balls in behind that have been consistently dangerous. And they are a work in progress. We knew that coming into the game, into this game, rotating of players, figuring out who works best together. You can see the the look on Casey Stoney's face, some frustration, not only with her team's play, but just defensively, mistakes that could be cleaned up. Quinn goes back the other way. Touchback by McClernand. Westfall collects for San Diego. Gurma. Short ball ahead. Down that left side. Jakobsen. Taken away. Mira Montes continues her strong night. She's been excellent. And it's not easy to step in, especially with a player like Huerta, who usually occupies that right hand side and really adds to the attack for this O.L. Reign side, but Mir Montez just defensively been so strong. Her positioning has been great. She's picked her moments correctly, when to get forward. Hasn't allowed any opportunities for San Diego in the attack from the left-hand side. Throw it, McNabb just gave it away. San Diego recovers with real. Germa. Over the top, 
He's trying to find Ali. Down off the chest and then cleared by Miramontes. He played last year with Louisville. Racing Louisville. College was in Nebraska. Time of foul on Mickey Stanton. First ever goal in the NWSL. Neighbor team the lead. one nothing. only in the second minute. Germans ready. Off Quinn. Morgan went for it. Stanton. Not a great clearance, but Thomas Joyce followed it all the way. She had the save of the week in back-to-back -back weeks. Yeah, it's been so good. And you know, one of the question marks, JP, coming into this game was how is she going to deal with that space in behind? But had it, has it needed to? And the fact that Rain's defense has done really well and dropping when needed. Yes, they gave away the Alex Morgan goal, the perfectly timed run from her. But outside of that, haven't given up much of that space in behind, especially when they like the high press, and drop, got numbers behind the ball, and played at a tempo with and without the ball has been difficult for San Diego. Real from Telford. Westfall. Ali trying to turn. Possession. And the ball was out. They get a foul. That's a foul instead. But not from there. The argument no. was that it wasn't even a foul, but it is. But they're going to move it just a yard again. <laughs> Side the box, headed away. Foul of O.L. Ray. Now, this is a great opportunity here for San Diego. See if Morgan takes this. This is well within her range. It's hard to tell all the players going up. I don't see a foul there. No, I don't either. Players going for the ball is all that it looked like. But nonetheless, really good look for San Diego. Outside the box enough to be able to get some pace and dip on this ball if struck correctly. She's already got a two-goal game. She's looking, but right at Tullus Joyce. Did have some power to it. You know, from our angle, it did look like it had a little bit of spin, but not enough in the end to be able to get past Tullus Joyce. Gets up and over the wall. Tullis Joyce has it read all the way and does well to keep hold of it, not give up a rebound either. Tullis Joyce from out of the University of Miami. It's a great start to this campaign. Coming into this game is 0.67 goals against average. Telford. And the ball is going to sail out of play. Lauren Barnes. Forward once she gets the ball back. And JP, we've talked a lot about the rain and their ability to get numbers behind the ball quickly, but they also gain ground defensively going forward. Just saw Carly Telford being put under pressure, having to play that one out for a throw in, and oh well, rain regaining possession. The amount of numbers they get forward quickly to put the opposition under pressure has been so good. San Diego's going to make another change. Here, Marlene Schimmer is going to come in. Turnbow is going to go out. Third game for Schimmer. All was a sub. Turnbow is going to be a name that we'll remember in this league. I think she's going to have a strong year. Yeah, really high ceiling for the young player. 
Pat Santa Clara was typically more of a number nine, played higher up the field. But I like her in the number 10 position because she can pop into spaces to be able to get turned. Didn't see her a ton in this game, didn't get involved. And that will be the evolution of her as a, as a young player going forward in this league. How can she make an impact when her team isn't playing well? How can she drop deeper to help link play, but also pick up the ball and get running at the back line? went missing a little too much for a, a team in San Diego that will rely on her presence in the attack. Yeah, 11 goals, 12 assists in her last college season at Santa Clara. So San Diego have made all five of their allowed substitutions. The turn by Barnes. Quinn. Moving it ahead on this left side. Spike wrapped up. And just cleared it out to safety corner. And it's the right ball from Latsko to look to see if she can play where to on that far post, where to just not seeing it early enough, but they do earn the corner in the end. Hyatt coming up for this. Already Hyatt with a big goal earlier to extend the rain lead to 3-0 at that point. And then Morgan scored to make it 3-1. Barnes is ready. 76th minute. 3-1 rain at home. Near post, now it's more central. Stopped by Telford. Lauren Bard's delivery from the corner kicks tonight have been excellent. Just put a lot of pressure on San Diego. They haven't been able to clear it. Almost found their fourth goal. He's off Vanderyot. He's making her NWSL Challenge Cup debut this evening. Just signed in the middle of March for Vanderyot. This left side. Nice cutting ball. Jakobsen. Tough angle, blocked out anyway by Hyatt. Leads the team in blocks and clearances. Shimmer. German Youth International will send it in. It'll bounce. Swing and a half a chance there. Clip back upstairs. A bosser. And then Ali. McNabb. Good control. And then sent it out wide. It's a goal kick. The next San Diego Wave home game coming up Saturday, April 23rd. It'll be against this Oil Rain side. Go to San Diego Wave, fc.com slash tickets and purchase your tickets today. <laughs> 78 minute to go lead for Oil Rain. I have a throw in. from right in front of that San Diego bench. Right now with a total of eight goals, that's the most goals scored in the Challenge Cup after four games. Ali on the chase. It's a good job by Barnes. Yeah, really good job from Barnes. Just reading the, the tire away from that ball from Westfall. It's that better leadership that we were talking about at the beginning of the game. Just helping lead the line, really with the other back three for the rain. Haven't needed help, much help and excellent all game. Not easy, especially when you don't have Alana Cook or Sofia Huerta starting that back line. Had the same unit in the first three games of this Challenge Cup. So to make two, two changes, not always easy, especially with the front runners that San Diego has, but they've done extremely well and no answers on the other side for San Diego against them. 
all rain could win this game and get three points and being able to rest all of those players that's big for Laura Harvey and it speaks to the philosophy and the principles and just the understanding of all the players I and mean, we go back to even what Laura Harvey was saying is preparing for this game as if those these players aren't going to be here and, and that's what we saw for the most part those players are unavailable you don't want to risk a Jess Fishlock and you didn't have to put where to in as early as she had to go in for the injured Zara King more players would even be able to be rested, but it really speaks to the understanding each player knowing their role and being able to execute. Was this the best performance from San Diego that we've seen? Absolutely not, but they are a work in progress and they still have so many dangerous options up top and Rain have dealt with them really well. You mentioned no Fishlock, no Rose Lavelle, no Fernando Lopez, no Angelina, but they may all be back. Sunday versus Angel City. Ball sir. Quinn. Lorraine controlling Stanton. Miramontes. Germa. Germa gets a return. Broken up by Quinn. versus Korniak. Yeah, well done for Quinn. That touch just takes him away from pressure, able to keep the ball moving. We talked a lot about San Diego and then having a defensive presence under Kisi Sony, a defender herself, longtime England international, and really prides herself on, on having a team that's steady defensively. Some clear mistakes, especially on set pieces throughout this game. But it's in the attack that I have a bit more question. We haven't seen the tempo and then be able to move the ball quickly side to side to open up the game, look to go long over the top. We know that they can be a threat in behind. But outside of that, we didn't see them look to see if they could play out wide more often, made the game too narrow. And ultimate, ultimately, just too slow in the possession. They haven't forced the rain to, to adjust defensively. Turn, let's go, brought down, should be a penalty, no? Referee gave a point. The tackle was in the box. If she was calling it. It was in the box. And Lasko does a really good job of getting herself in between the ball and the player. And that is a clear penalty. Yeah. And there's Lasko looking to try to That's get herself in. It's absolutely 100% a penalty. Real trying to make a play on the ball. Doesn't get any part of it. Only gets, ah, maybe gets a little bit of something, but definitely takes... Let's penalty. go out in the end. This is interesting. I saw her point, but it didn't look like she was pointing to the spot. But if she was pointing to the foul, the foul was in the box. Well, I thought she was pointing to the spot There's originally as well, and then it looked like she was pointing to continue play. There's confusion everywhere, and now we're going to see some subs. Lopez and Cook. Lopez is back from playing for Mexico. So we play some let's go. Let's see how many changes they're going to make. I'm more concerned. <laughs> Forget the subs. What's the call on the field? That's a clear penalty in the box. She pointed, but from our angle, it didn't look like she was pointing at the spot itself. But what else could she have been pointing at? Well, it's a penalty to, uh, to us, but not a penalty to her. So allowing for the subs, Mira Montes have gone down. Also is out as well. Fishlock is in with Lopez and Cook. It wasn't much of a protest. Well, that's, how could that be a throw -in? That means she said no foul? Yeah, no foul. Out. Absolutely no foul. We I mean, politely, we, we, we politely no. disagree. <laughs> politely disagree. I'm more interested now in the subs that Laura Harvey's bringing in after this performance and players really stepping up and taking their opportunities. I didn't think we would see Cook or Fishlock come into this game. 
that a sign? Miramontes looked like she was shaken up there. I mean, is that a sign that? Uh, it's a sign that you have depth. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that's for sure. But I mean, is she concerned? There's still like six minutes in stoppage time left. San Diego gets a goal. It's a different game. Well, it goes back to what we were saying. Not only is it a quick turnaround from international break, but they also have to play on Sunday as well against another expansion team in Angel City. So just managing the minutes of these players, allowing for Cook and Fishlock, who just came in, to be able to get a run around a bit here in this game, and also just their sophistication and their understanding of this of this league to be able to close this game out, not concede another goal. Six Eastern time, we'll have that next game for you for the Oil Reign. It was against Angel City. Freya Coombe, formerly with Gotham FC, is their head coach. Right side. Fishlock, league MVP a year ago, sending it in. Taken away and cleared by San Diego. 85th minute. Some holding there from Cook. He's getting a lot of starts now for the U.S. national team. At that center back spot. She's been excellent. Just the composure. We talk about composure and the ability to play out of back with Lauren Barnes on the left side. But Lana Cook, just her range and passing, her ability to be able to get into 1v1 duels allows this rain team to be able to play it the way they do in terms of being able to step up their pressure, not afraid to be facing her own goal in 1v1 situations. Bright future for sure. On that right side. San Diego breaking. Jakobsen looking for Morgan. He's headed down. Huerta. Quinn. On the turn. Up on the left side. Royal Reign just keeping possession. Stanton. Barnes has played into space. More time ticks off the clock. 87th minute. Quinn from Barnes. It's real. Jakobsen. Just blasted away by Hyatt. Talked about a lot of the things that San Diego could not do. Did that three early goal giveaway rattle? Did that oh, take I certainly think so. I think it would rattle any team. It's just difficult to come back from that deficit. Get, did get the one goal back. We really just didn't get their foot on this game in terms of being able to utilize their front runners where they've shown a good threat with Jody Taylor and Alex Morgan. Oh, Rain able to nullify them quite a bit. And then other players underneath just weren't able to move the ball quickly enough. And you know, it's one of those players that we haven't talked about, but Tegan McGrady out for yellow yeah. card accumulation adds a lot That's into a this loss. attack, especially providing the width. And, and that has been an area of concern a bit for San Diego in this game, just not being able to get higher up the field and pull out this defense for the rain. It's just been too easy. Everything's been in front of them when they're trying to link play. By the way, two yellow cards, that's, <laughs> no. It's gotta be at least three. <laughs> two is just just not good in any tournament. Fish lock got a piece. Cleared away. You had several players on both teams that came in here with one yellow card away from sitting out the next game. Quinn. No one closing. Quinn from distance, high and wide. Good little combination play. Quinn knows that they could have done better in that opportunity. Just gets underneath it. 89th minute. 3-1 rain over San Diego. As the result stands. They will have 10 points now. Opening up a little bit of distance. 
between them and Portland. I thought that was a foul. So did Alex Morgan. It was on McLernan. That was a close one, just looking back. Looked like Clarinet, Clarinet caught her actually inside the box. You think that's two penalties missed? Yeah, it is two penalties missed. Off the left foot of Barnes. It would go out of play. Not intentional from the Clarinet, but still doesn't excuse. Flipping of her ankle. You'll see it right here. Yeah. Inside the box. Casey, Casey Stoney, Stoney <laughs> obviously agrees it. with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Another foul, free kick. O.L. Rain as they try to close this one out at home here in the 90th minute. <laughs> For a single on stoppage time. Three goals scored in Challenge Cup history. Three goals, 11 minutes, the 11 minute mark. That's been the real difference in this game. That was a late whistle. Verizon brings you our stoppage time. It's an obvious foul drawn by Morgan. First of three minutes added on here. Say the game plan for the rain was to be giving up some of these fouls, but it certainly was denying penetrating passes into the front runners of San Diego, and they continue to make that statement, not really allowing Alex Morgan any opportunities on the ball. On a free kick, and the box fell towards Gerber. Instead, it's cleared out by O.L. Rain. Reels throw it. Reels get it back. Short to Ali. Cutting ball by Greedy. That's cleared. Westfall. We're a third of the way through at stopping side. Locked out by Barnes. Westfall will drop it back. Well, Rain thought they had a clearance. They did not. Into the box, Barnes, nice touch. Cleared by Lopez. Westfall. Reedy. Oh, yeah, we'll let that one go. For real. Pressure by Quinn. Turned over, good pressure. Fish lock. On a bounce. Ali in the box, low shot. Ali. Close call. Yeah, it's great understanding from Ali just to read it off of Alex Morgan, knowing that there's pressure up her back. She continues on her run and then knows exactly where she is and allows this ball run across her body to take it first time. Another near miss by the young striker. Takes it well, just trickles past the post. She looks promising. She certainly does. And, you know, when you look at the San Diego team, they are starting to play more direct over the last couple of games. I do think that that suits them well and with the personnel, but when that's taken away, what are their other options? How can they attack? How can they punish teams? I think that's been the biggest issue throughout this game. When it wasn't on to play in behind, there was no other answer for players to get on the ball, especially through the midfield in this game for San Diego. Is on it. We're past the three minutes of stoppage time, so more has been added on. Reedy on the move, has Ali in front of her. Thought about slipping it through, but it was broken up. On that right side for Fishlock. Just killing the clock, knows that they don't need anything more offensively. 
managing the game, one of the reasons why they would be on the field, and Laura Harvey would sub in these players is to close it out and take any risks. Three goals in the first 11 minutes, the earliest three goals in cup history. The big difference in this one, San Diego got one back, but it's not going to be enough. Where did all this extra time come from? After the three minutes. <laughs> Refs enjoying the game. Well, that's it. Game over. Laura Harvey's team unbeaten now in four. That great start helped them all the way through. Yeah, a real convincing game from the rain from the first minute to the, the 94th, just putting her foot on it, taking charge on both sides of the ball, dominating when it mattered most here at home. And San Diego, some glimpses of what they can do, but still a lot more work, putting themselves under pressure defensively when it's not needed, and then need to ha add more variety in their attack to be able to punish teams and, and utilize the strengths that they have going forward. So the number one offense can uh, rest a little bit, but they've got another game coming up in a few days, Sunday, in this same stadium when they take on another expansion side, Angel City. The West Division, Rain, are alone at the top as we go to break. We'll come back with the wraps on this one from Lumen Field in Seattle, where the Rain win it 3-1. We are back at it again tomorrow on the CBS Sports Network. Kansas City versus Houston. Kansas City defeated Houston 3-0 the last time these two clubs met, so maybe a little revenge on the minds of the Houston Dash, led by Rachel Daly. We'll have that one tomorrow, 8 Eastern time. Hugs all around, right? Nikki Stanton, her first goal. Coach loves that, right? In the second minute, that gave them a lead that they never relinquished. Here are the highlights. Yeah, it'd be a great delivery from Lauren Barnes at, from a corner kick. And San Diego just not able to clear a couple deflections off of players. It's the OL Reign that able to keep it alive. And then Stanton does well to connect with it, keep it low. Ultimately takes a deflection in the end. But Tal Telford sees it late. Nothing that she can do about it. Reign up 1-0 early on in this game. And they wouldn't look back because they would continue to cause trouble for the San Diego defense. It's a tough ball out. Korniak tries to make a play on it. Lands right to Balser, and what a finish that is. Just the dip in the end. Telford can't make the play as she's outstretched, trying to parry it out of the goal. And then Lauren Barnes to step up again. The third goal in the 12th minute. This time it's Hyatt. Sierra King keeps it alive, and then Hyatt just with a half chance just floats it in. Telford off her line, not able to retreat enough. OL Reign up 3-0 in the first 12 minutes. And it would be San Diego would get one back off of Alex Morgan, takes this one really well off a ball over the top from Taylor Korniak. Makes no mistakes about it, makes good connection as Tillis Joyce is coming off her line, just slots it into the far post. But outside of that, no real opportunities for San Diego and OL Reign would dominate the rest of this game. San Diego had an edge in possession, but that was kind of meaningless. It's what they did or did not do, I guess, with their possession. And it looks like they even have an edge in the shots as well, but really it's about what you put in the back of the net and a little rain put theirs away early on. And this controlled the game through the defensive pressure, something that Laura Harvey talked about coming into this game was the most important for them to get a result. They get the result at home, and home is where they will be again on Sunday when they take on Angel City. What a performance, especially in the first half by O.L. Reign at home. Nikki Stanton, Bethany Balser, and Sam Hyatt all scored by the time the clock read 11th minute. For Lori Lindsay and our entire crew, I'm J.P. Delacan. We'll see you again tomorrow. Final score, 3-1.